boom the st march is super close and i know you guys are wondering what exactly can be on the st march that can fry my brain well in this video i'm going to give you guys my predictions based on my advice and my long history with the sat and tutoring over hundreds of kids having a tutoring company launching two amazing sd crash courses which are not included in a bundle link in the description below for a major discount and i'm going to give you guys my entire prediction breakdown so first things first what is going to be on the st march section and what is going to be the the biggest part at least for the math we're going to talk about math first the biggest part about the math section is going to be how it's really always been and that's the heart of algebra so what the heart of algebra basically consists of is you know like linear equations and system linear equations and the more the the more basic type of math but it's again mainly linear equations so if you're able to lock down on your linear equation knowledge, what I, what I mean by this is, guys, I want you to be able to understand, you know, how word problems work with linear equations, right? How to read like a couple of sentences and create your own linear equation. Let's say the sentence is like, there's 30 cookies in a jar. Every hour, there's five more cookies in the jar. Please model a linear equation that can represent this problem. You just have the y-intercept, which is the initial amount at 30, right? And the rate of change is five every hour. So X would be the number of hours and the slope would be five. And Y would be the total number of cookies in the jar. Boom, right off the dome, your equation is Y equals five X plus 30. See, it's super easy, right? So once you understand linear equations and being able to do things like that, or let's say they give you a system of linear equations, you know, you know, you have to scale the linear equations together, eliminate coefficient and then solve for the variable, eliminate any answer choice that doesn't have that one variable as a possible answer and plug that back into the original equation to get the other variable and then see what your final answer is if there is one remaining after your initial you know a screening after you found the first variable which is like a nice trick i just gave you guys hopefully that didn't go over your head but the idea is you want to be able to do some things like that right uh read linear equations uh, graphically read them like through words or algebraically and that's really what the heart of algebra is that's on the sat you see so many linear problems you see so many problems uh revolving around linear equations m x plus b slope intercept form um being able to find the slope uh how what y intercept means interpreting the slope interpreting y intercept that's everywhere on the math sat right for calculator and non-calc so let's say you are about to study for sat starting today and you have like five days left if i was to tell you the best tip to like really maximize the score other than you know check my courses is i want you guys to really focus on hard algebra all right so there's so many like topics in the st math section right you want to grab the biggest one and get as much information you can from it so that way you're still getting a majority of st math questions correct now let's say you already have like a strong heart of algebra knowledge then you're a pretty good uh, spot and then you can move on to my tip number two which what i also think will be on the sat march a good amount after heart of algebra for the math section is advanced calculator concepts right now what i mean by advanced calculator concepts and this obviously applies to the calculator section of the sat is a lot of times students forget that stuff like margin of error standard deviation and actually knowing how to use a calculator with hopefully a ti84 calculator is on the sat right margin of error and standard deviation is probably one of the most overlooked concepts when it comes to the sat calculator section because because there's not many problems on it right so a lot of students just ignore it and they are like oh, you know it's okay i'll get like uh, 50 questions right and i'll get that one question wrong but usually that's not the case they don't get 50 questions right they get like 35 questions right and then they're like ah oh, dang maybe if i did get that one margin of error and that other standard deviation question correct i would have probably got a 1510 instead of a 1480 uh, those two questions can literally count for 30 to 50 points depending on the curve on the sat so you really want to be able to answer every single st math problem and personally i also had this bad like habit of thinking that you know what as long as i'm able to understand most of the concepts i can skip imaginary numbers margin of error standard deviation but then you start to realize that these are like four five six seven problems in the sat sometimes and you're giving that away because you're too lazy just to cover this concept and it's a very easy concept margin of error is pretty not that hard standard deviation is not that hard these are things that you can literally learn within probably 10 minutes so i really want you guys to focus on that because i can almost assure you that you're going to see that on the st march exam on the st math section and now the next thing you're going to experience and see a lot is polynomial slash quadratic mastery all right you're going to be able to uh, have to do 
polynomial slash quadratic questions like factoring, deciding what the graph of a quadratic equation may look like depending on uh, the equation, right? Understanding vertex form, completing the square, right? Stuff like this, you're going to see on the ST March uh, exam guaranteed because after heart of algebra and like linear, linear equations, what you see next is polynomials and quadratics because the, the a college board really wants you to be able to do problems like this and really show that you have a strong understanding of an equation that's not just to one degree, right? That has a squared in it, a cube in it, maybe even a quad in it, right? So understand your exponents, understand exponential graphs, understand quadratics, polynomials, stuff like this is gonna be like the next bulk of the ST math section. So you have, you have your heart of algebra, right? Which is the main bulk. Then you have your polynomial quadratic mastery, which is the second big bulk. And then you have like the small, the small parts, like imaginary numbers, margin of error, standard deviation, and these three like bubbles, right? If you're able to master all three of these bubbles, you're already looking at like a 700 plus on the ST math section. Okay. And then you can all obviously also hit the other topics like circles and triangles, but uh, geometry as a whole, but I really want you to focus on these three things because you're, you're really going to like make yourself a robust ST math test taker. And let's say you're like, okay, but where do I start? I could do Khan Academy, but Khan Academy gives such hard ST math problems that I just get dissuaded because Khan Academy does give you problems that are like much harder than the average SAT uh, math problem. So then I want you guys to check out my ST math course because I have literally every topic you need broken down and you guys can study it and really maximize your score. Now, before I talk about the reading section and my predictions for that, I want you guys to leave a like on the video and comment down below right now. What's the first thing you're going to study on the ST math section. So uh, that way other students can also look at it and feel motivated to do so. Good karma, you know? So when it comes to ST reading, there's gonna be a lot of questions and you guys have probably seen this on like a practice exams or previous SATs if you've taken them. That is the, you know, what is the answer or what evidence did you use to solve the previous question, right? Which, which, which line supports your answer to the previous question? You see that all the time. And right, this is gonna be no different. In fact, on the digital SAT, I saw it on the regular SAT practice test. I've seen it so much. You're gonna see this and you're gonna have to know how to do this to a you know pretty high degree. Okay, because you can expect probably six to seven problems revolving around this. And the thing about these problems, which is like a good and bad, is that usually if you get the initial problem wrong, like the uh, the actual like question, then you most likely got the evidence question wrong too, because the evidence is gonna prove the wrong answer, so they're both wrong. So it's like a double whammy, which is why getting this question right is so important. And I, I talk about it in my my ST reading crash course, also link in the description below, where there's a technique that you can use to almost get these problems right 100% of the time. And I use it all the time and it literally it makes my ST score go from like a 620 to a 740. My actual ST reading score was literally a 740 because I had, you know, done uh, implementations like this, techniques like this, practiced and rehearsed them multiple times. And now it's for you guys. I have a course for it and you guys can check it out. Now, the next thing you can expect, this, this is more of a general thing. That's grammar rules. Obviously, grammar rules will come up on the ST writing section because it's kind of synonymous with grammar, right? It's going to ask you semicolon questions, dash questions, colons, and everything of that nature. So you're just going to have to expect that, right? And that's nothing new. You guys should have already predicted this. You guys should already have begun your studying for this. Because if not, then, oh, man, you're kind of late. But it's okay because I'm sure that you guys can grasp this concept. Pretty simple because grammar rules is just like, it's like just a rule that you literally have to read once, see a couple of examples of, and you, it'll start to register in your head. Um, I don't, in, even in my course, if I want to talk about the writing section, I don't even have to touch on the grammar rules too much. I do talk about every single one, but it's really easy to understand. Each lesson was only like five, six minutes long max because it's a, not a hard concept. Once you learn it, you're good for life and you use it when you write college essays and it makes you become a better writer overall. And now the last prediction, and this, I feel like I might be right on this one, is that the March 11th SAT will most likely have the dual passages, uh, questions twice. All right, we always see a dual passage question once, right? That's like a guaranteed, unless you're blessed by God to the highest degree and you don't get a pair passage question, you're most likely gonna get a pair passage question, whether it be history or science. Recently, I've seen it more on the science as well as the history. Before, it was always just history, right? You have like Lincoln talking one passage and Washington talking the other, and you have to compare the two. But now I've, I've been starting to see it more in the science. And I'm like, hmm, every time the SAT, based on my experience, has had two uh, dual passage questions, right? It's been history one, which is like what everyone expects, but also a science question, uh, passage. And that's where it gets a little confusing. And you're like, I wasn't expecting that. But the ideas are the same, right? You still have to do all the passage one questions first, 
then the passage two questions and then you want to answer all the questions that compare the two passages right and i talk about that again in my essay reading course you want to be able to answer dual passage questions to a, like and get like 100 percent on them because these are the ones that really trip a lot of students up in fact this is my weakest point on the sat i would suck at this part i would suck at dual passage questions because i'm like bro i hate reading one passage already i gotta read two like i understand you guys i was also like a student like that but you just have to you know grind through and find the key you know techniques you want to use like i said doing past one questions first then two questions then answering both at the same time the tips like this will help you um do much better on these dual passage questions especially now that i'm really predicting that's going to appear twice or you'll see on the science and history you can't mess it up right otherwise you're going to get like 50 percent of the essay reading uh section wrong and then you're already looking at like a sub like 700 600 score and you're not gonna be in the top 99 percentile and on this channel i want everyone watching all my viewers all the people who like have bought my course and who actually really has succeeded and have watched my videos in general or even watched one or two videos i want you guys to be able to score in the 99 percentile all right nothing less i mean i guess you really can't go more but i want you guys to do the best you possibly can so thank you all for watching be sure to check out my sc crash course bundle i actually bundle my math course and my reading course together and offer them a major discount use the code description below that way you guys can really literally just like master the sat to the full potential for this march sat like asap i want you guys to all get like a above 1500 so thank you all for watching peace